Right, here we are, a second order differential equation with a trigonometrical term in it, taken from the 2002 advanced art paper and having to find a particular solution given these initial conditions. Well, first of all, taking the homogeneous part of the equation, that's the part of the equation without the x terms, so there's only y's and derivatives of y's, you can form the auxiliary equation using the coefficients, so it's 2, 5. Now, for that quadratic there, just quickly check it's discriminant, 40 could be 20, so that's negative 16, right? So I'll need to use the formula for that. So putting in the formula for that, there you go, 40 could be 20. That'll give me a complex conjugate pair. So there it is, negative 1 plus or minus 2i, which means that for the complementary function, I'm going to have sines and cosines in it then. So that the real part of it then, that's the negative one, I'm going to have for the x, I'll be to the negative x. And the two at the end is going to form the multiple of the angle. So I've got a cos 2x, b sine 2x. Yeah, and that's a complementary function. Seems quick and easy just now, but it'll come back to haunt us at the end. Right, now, next part, the particular integral. That's the one that's going to solve this four cos x at the end of it. Now, since it's cosines and it doesn't clash, we can safely use sines and cosines. They just keep repeating themselves over the derivatives and turning to each other. So there'll be some combination of them there all together. Now, I'll have to get the derivatives to feed it back into the original one. Well, that's easy enough because they just keep rotating through each other. So I'm only going to have the sines and cosines altogether from that. And they should equal 4 cos x altogether. Right, put them back in. There's no point in putting them back in altogether. I'm only get sines and cosines. So, so many sines, so many cos will give me the 4 cos x. And then to find how many there are of each of these, I just need to go through each of these. There's five of those, two of those, and one of those altogether. So, for the sines, I rattle through the sines, taking in five of those, and then two of those, and then one of the bottom line. And same with the cosines, five, two, and one, because there's five of those, two of those one of those all together. Right, tidying that up. So that's going to be my sine x term, and that's going to give me the amount for the cos x term, and altogether it should give 4 cos x, which means that the part in front of the sine here, that is the 4 d minus c minus 2d should be 0, and the part from the cos should come to 4. Right, magically given them numbers. That means I need to solve these two equations simultaneously to find c and d. Right, I can knock out d by doing doubling the first That'll leave me C then. So 10 C will be 4, so that gives me C quite quickly. And then popping that C back in there, right, I've got 4 fifths plus the 4 D in that bottom equation. So I can get D from this one. And there are D's 4 fifths. And there it is. That's my particular integral done. So now I can get the general solution. The general solution, because I'm made up of the two parts, will be made up of the complementary function, which is bolted on to the particular integral. So I'll be e to the negative x cos 2x plus b sine 2x with these two unknown constants of integration still in it. But luckily I know the coefficients of these two. Right, up to the top because I need more space. There it is again. Right, general solution. To get the particular solution, I'll have to input these numbers. x is 0, y is 0. Right, when y is 0, x is 0, e to the 0 is 0, and then the other zeros will be 1s and zeros. That'll be fine. So putting in these zeros, that's it, put a 0 in the right place. So I've got a cos 0 and b sine 0, and 2 fifths, and again, 0 is going for all the x's. Right, so that's a 1, a cos will be a 1, a sine will be a 0, a cos, a sine will be a 0, and a cos will be a 1. So I'm not left with a lot, I've just got that a, and further on, 4b. So b's disappeared, that was easy, and that should all equal 0, so a is negative 4 fifths. Right, you can put that back in then. So you can put that back into there, and find the form of, we're halfway now to the particular solution. Still got this B here though. So once we finish off putting these other two bits in, plus the four fifths cos x, you can figure out what to do with the B. Well, let's see, we've got dy, but they need the derivative here. I've used that y already, so it's the derivative I need. So differentiate it a wee bit longer, because I've got a product here. So I'll be differentiate the first and leave that bracket alone. And then I'll be leave that e to the negative x alone. Now differentiate the inside of the bracket. That means I'll need a 2 to come out from the coefficient of that inner function. And then there's not enough space, I could just squeeze that in here. So differentiating those two parts and forgetting that little x at the end. Nobody notices, that's, that's all right then. Then, 
putting this in. So I want the first derivative is 1 and the x's are all going to be zeros, giving me 1's and zeros. Right, so the first derivative is 1 and then all the x's are going to be zeros. So there's a new 0 there, a nice little cos 0, that'll be 1, a nice little sine 0, that'll be 0, e to the 0. And same again here, oh, first minute, 4, 2, 0, 8, that's it, put it in. And if it could be any dramatic, cos sine to the 0, 0. And 2b cos 0. So, now tidying that lot up, so I'll be a negative 1, and I'll have a negative 4 fifths there, and that's about all from that bracket. Then I've got 1 times, I'll just have a 2b from that bracket, and then I've got a 2b from that wee cos at the end there. So, working out b, well, it's a bit long, there's a few more terms kicking about for b this time, it's just taking a next little step here, but eventually there we get, b is a tenth. And that's it done. Now I know where b is, and I can put that back in to find them both. So, the particular solution then. The particular solution will be put those numbers back in. I've got e to the negative x, and then putting in the negative 4 fifths for a, and the negative tenth for b, and I knew what the other two bits, bits were to begin with. That's the final answer in an acceptable form. The only thing is there are fractions kicking about, and quite often when you've got fractions you tend to extract them to take them to the beginning. So there's a possibility here because after all, look, there's some fifths and some tenths about. Well, you could take the fifths from that end one, make that positive, that one down first. So two fifths can come out of that, just leaving nice integral terms there. And the tenth can come out of that part, leaving nice integral terms inside of that. And how about that? <coughs> that would do for the answer. Right, oof, that was tiring. Right, well, that's it, I'm off.